international shipping plays a key role in enabling the world trade. This also leads, of course, to a high level of greenhouse gas emission and air pollution. We are facing one of the maritime's biggest challenges today due to the fact that the marine industry and all ships around the world is heavily dependent on fossil fuels. This causes high levels of both greenhouse gas emission and pollution and leads to climate change and affects the life both in the ocean and on land. TECO 2030 um, is set up as a sort of the environmental vehicle arm of the TECO group of companies. We established TECO 2030 back in August 2019 due to the fact that we realized for a long time that there would be a lot of climate change which was also coming uh, towards the shipping industry. Our mission is that we are facing one of the biggest environmental challenges of our time. And how can we sort of combine ever increasing shipping volumes with reduced emission? The international shipping industry is currently carries around 90% of the world trade and accounts for approximately two and a half of the CO2 emissions. This this might seem like a small number, but unless something is done to cut the emissions, the maritime industry share of global CO2 emissions is likely to increase in line with growing freight numbers. With the introduction of the climate target from the International Maritime Organization, uh, they made it clear that the industry can no longer continue with business as usual. The maritime industry must make big changes to lower its environmental and climate footprint and can no longer continue to pollute the air and seas like they have been doing until now. More and more companies and people are becoming aware of the impact, the environmental and uh, climate impact of the industry. Um, and we believe ship owners that have made already efforts to cut their emissions will be at a competitive advantage. The International Maritime Organization aims to cut CO2 emission for international shipping by 40% by 2030. Therefore, across the world, all shipping companies will have to do something to meet those goals. And TICO 2030 want to help them with that. Uh, we believe the solution to decarbonize uh, the maritime industry is new technology that will enable ships uh, to switch from fossil fuel to green hydrogen. TICO 2030 will provide the technology the ships will need to switch to hydrogen. And we will, by doing this, contribute to the green transition within the maritime industry. TICO 2030 is basically developing the engine of tomorrow. And we believe that innovative technologies can reduce the environmental and climate footprint of the shipping industry. What is known as green hydrogen, which is hydrogen produced by renewable energy, will be key to reducing emissions from the maritime sector and that all ships will eventually become emission free. A switch from oil to hydrogen will also lead, of course, to less pollution and improve life both on land and in the ocean. With Tore as that driver of TICO 2030, he made this clear a few years ago. He really wanted to make a transition. He said there must be technology available to help the maritime industry to, um, to meet those goals the IMO set forward. We are therefore now developing hydrogen fuel cells uh, together with our strategic partner AVL, 
which has more than 18 years of experience in the fuel cell industry. We will launch our TICO 2030 marine hydrogen based fuel cells by the end of 2022. Hydrogen fuel cells are like batteries that do not need to be charged. They produce electricity and heat and function almost the same way as normal diesel engines, but use hydrogen as fuel instead of traditional fossil fuels. Fuel cells do not produce any greenhouse gas emission and convert hydrogen into electricity while only emitting water vapor and hot air. Ships will only be able to operate at zero emissions if they stop relying on fossil fuels. We are working to set up a gigafactory in northern Norway to produce fuel cells the engine of tomorrow. Here our aim is to produce fuel cells with a total capacity of 1.2 gigawatt by 2030. Imagine 1.2 gigawatt equals a capacity of a large nuclear power plant. And when 1.2 gigawatt of fuel cells are installed on board various ships, this will lead to annual CO2 emission reduction of 4 million tons. And that equals an approximate of 1 million fossil fueled cars. It's still early days for the hydrogen industry, even though you can read about it in newspaper all day long. At the, for the time being, hydrogen is currently much more expensive than traditional fossil fuels. However, this is changing. And the increasing use of renewable energy to create hydrogen will soon lead to reduced cost. As the industry matures and the growth is coming, we will definitely see that hydrogen is going to be competitive just in a few years. And all transitions need help from government, countries all over the world to change from one thing to another.